Yes. Uh, I was just going to say, uh, the reason I didn't choose the 5% was just because of the fact that uh, ING's like, initial objective was to get out relatively early. So um, to use the 5% cap rate and try to ask almost for too much where you're looking to get out, I thought was a bit on the risky side. A bit aggressive. That's, a, that's an interesting approach. Yeah, OK, I, I like what you're saying there. OK, so, um, oh, and let me go back. So as you see that, so 6.75% on my 40 million was almost $600 million. Okay, so we're going to get to the end here. And by the way, so I put this up, we all realized, you saw this, none of it really mattered because all we cared about was 60%, right? Yep. In effect, it's a condominium, folks. That's all that mattered. And so it was interesting, and if you cut through all of that, you understood it, and it was just that simple. And so I put this up once again in that last class because people were saying, do I care? The IRR versus the equity multiple, you remember the difference between understanding equity multiples and IRR. And in this particular case, such a short hold, I really wanted to know what my equity multiple was and my IRR. And you really understand, all of you understand the difference between IRRs and equity multiples? Are you with me? Remember, IRRs vary drastically, even if the equity multiple is the same because it depends where your cash flows are. If you have questions, you can ask me after that. So we get to the bottom line. The sale price, 595 on this 60%, right? What was the debt? 322. Gross proceeds, the partnership equity, which was placed in the deal, net proceeds. So it's easy enough. Look at that. A return multiple of 3.89. Is that good or bad? It's good. It's great. Wow, look at that, incredible return. And so if you're the analyst, say, we're in the deal in 2003, we're out in 2007, that's pretty darn good. And then, let's do the same thing with an IRR, right? And the only thing really was, remember, we had to pay that pilot and then that weird administrative fee. So we're assuming that there's really no money in or out other than that expense. And so we had income, which was stabilized income when we sold it. Assume that all the costs are effectively paid for by the construction loans. And we look at our net cash flow. What was our equity investment in? 47% IRR. Pretty darn good. What, so wait, they, they invested the full 70, not 60% of, of, that, of the equity needed? I read that they're investing 60% yeah, of yeah. the equity needed for the deal. Right, yeah. me too. But, but that's not 70. Really. I'm sorry, what was the last part? I'm saying 60% of 45. You do about 45. Yeah, 45 million. That was the number. 42. In a sense, where it, I thought that the equity got the 60. This is the total IRR, and then you look at ING's return. Oh, okay. It's the 42. Uh, just want to make sure you got that. I, so, I got that, yeah. Right. I did that with my So there was a little bit. And then, of course, net present value on that deal, looking at whatever the hurdle rate would be. Yeah. So the, the one issue that I, I, fortunately, I ended up getting, I think, to the right answer because my numbers are very similar. Once again, but, there's no one right answer. There are many right answers. But, but have to I, get I don't see how you can break out just the forest. For city part, because the pilot is going to be charged to both for city and to time. So I took the aggregate because I said, okay, the ground lease is for, for both sides. Okay. And then I took whatever the equity percentage is of the aggregate, because if you just took the pilot and applied it only to for city, you're not you're not getting what what the New York Times is paying for, you know, their their percentage of that. Maybe right. That's right, so maybe that will juice the numbers just a little bit more. Okay, okay. that's fine. Can you make the previous slide? Yeah. Which one? The previous one. All right, so this is just a summary of the deal, basically, from for the FC Lion part. FC Lion owns 60%, right? It doesn't matter. So this is their condominium. The value is 600 million. Their cost, if you will, or the debt in the deal was 322. Their proceeds were basically then 272. How much did they put up? 70, of which 60% of that, $42 million, is IMG share. So that's why we can see that IMG got 163, they put it in 42, they netted 121. 
the return multiple is 3.89. And their IRR, as we looked at it over time, which numbers may or may not be quite right, is about 40 plus percent. Win, win, win. That was the true IR that they actually, that was? They got something close to that, that's yeah. correct. I don't have the actual numbers, but that's what our sources say. So they were able to sell after three years? Yes, so, and, and what really happened was that they went out and then Forest City Ratner then refinanced the building for a billion bucks. <laughs> I mean, they bought out ING. ING should have stayed in and they would have made even more money. But that's okay, that ING achieved its objective. That was the goal. And once again, you know, you can't second guess they made what they made because that was what their goals and objectives were for their investors. But Forest City Ratner then refinanced the whole thing, pulled out a billion dollars in cash. But there was, they, they, did ING have any recourse on the 322? Yeah. No. Right, so I mean, <laughs> They had a lot more risk. Forest Hills had a lot more, Forest City had a lot more risk. Than and they, they did, that's right. That's correct. But, um, but, they, but they managed it properly. Right? So, you know, so the NAOP deal, much smaller, but the concepts really are the same about what one could do if you came in on a site which has, you know, kind of the same kind of but okay, maybe it's only a couple hundred thousand square feet instead of a couple of million square feet. All right, so uh, it's uh, now quarter to 10. And so this is our opportunity for the next uh, hour, if you will, for you to break into your teams and to now focus. And I will happily go around. I know one of the teams gave me their SWOT analysis, and I will work with you on your SWOT analysis to see where you stand. And hopefully you found this to be productive. Uh, hand in to me, at least those of you who printed out, please, in your time study so I can look at those. And then uh, we'll continue to work through that session. Okay, well, thank you. So at, oh, let me just show you. So at 1040, I'll get through this. Sir. Yeah. yeah, do that. Uh, so, bring uh,
Alright. Are you in your groups? Alright, so let's talk about, I'm going to send you a spreadsheet, I'm send everybody a spreadsheet. I'm updating the spreadsheets because I want to make sure that you answer the questions in the NAOP challenge and this is also valuable with regard to setting your program for your plan. And so all of you, I hope, have some recollection as to how we did this in the prior class. And if you weren't in the prior class, then you'll catch up pretty quickly once you look at the spreadsheet. So remember, the equilibrium analysis is ultimately a way to understand whether you can build something on your site. And you'll look at the inventory of existing space, and then you'll figure out what's under construction and plan, and then you'll figure out whether it makes sense to build into that. And so we have two different ways to look at equilibrium analysis. We can do it for office, or we can do it for apartments. And remember, we're relating the office demand to what happens when the market's in balance. And right now, I'll let you judge whether the market's in balance in Broward County, and most specifically in Fort Lauderdale. Remember, when rents start to rise, that means something's out of sync kilter, or out of uh, kilter, uh, and it's not in sync. When new construction commences, by the way, is there any new office construction in Fort Lauderdale? No. So does that mean the market is in equilibrium? No. I don't know. I'm, I'm asking the question. So each group will figure out whether it makes sense. And the market, of course, is it experiencing any real increase in rent? You'll have to look again. And you'll dig deep, deeper into your post star and see if that matches the REIS data and the real capital analytics data that I have here. But remember, equilibrium can vary widely between this. Now, one thing that's important, remember, you're going to look, because the, even though the NAOP study says, hey, tell me how many jobs you can create on this site, I want you to demonstrate to them whether it makes sense. I, I don't think it makes sense to say, oh, gee, how much can you build just because you can build it? You're going to be smarter than that. You're going to say it makes sense to build because it is appropriate to build, because the market says so, not because they want it to be built. And that's going to be giving them the kind of intelligence and advice that any property owner should have. And these are the formulas that you've done before. And so the spreadsheet that I'm going to send you again, I've updated it a little bit before. And remember, this was kind of the generic spreadsheet. I gave you tables A, B, C, and D. And by the way, you really only have to do the downtown submarket. I'm not really concerned about anything more than that. If you want to look at Broward County as a whole, remember there are a couple of submarkets in the Broward County submarket. You probably should look at all of that together. And then just focus on downtown. It's kind of a small submarket. But this is the downtown submarket. In each of your groups, you can figure it out. And you'll make a judgment as to what it is. And remember, it's just taking available space under construction and plan, and you'll, you'll get the determination of what that is. And the real simple way to do it is look at your current inventory and figure out what the equilibrium vacancy rate is. Now, I don't know the actual equilibrium vacancy in Broward County. But I think, what do you think it is, actually? Do you have a good guess? I think, actually, they did this for the due diligence class. Didn't you? What was it? No. no. Yes, on the office market, I think it was Brian. But we didn't do Brandon. people's the kind of analysis. Wasn't no, but, I mean, you had the bank. And Brandon, didn't you do office space? No, I don't. Oh? Somebody did. I, I, I have to I know so I'm guessing it's in the low space. double digits. That's just my Alex. guess. And, and that's one number I'd like us all to figure out, because if you're working from that same basis, you can figure it out. And, and so this is, this is that one number, which is going to be interesting, that will affect your judgment. Okay? And then you can run this, pro, this spreadsheet, which I'll give you pretty easily. And once you've done it, and once again, you won't have all these, you'll have a couple of submarkets. Then you can say, gee, how much space can this market absorb? And remember, once you've done that, 
From your Reese table, you know how many square feet there are per worker. I just put this up by way of example. How many, you look at your data, you can say how many square feet are occupied by office users in the A market in Fort Lauderdale. Because whatever space you design on the Miller site, it is A space. End of discussion. Nobody builds B and C space. Agreed, folks? Just don't do it. And so when you figure it out, whatever that number is, once again, I'm just giving you a sample, then you can figure out, gee, gee, you know, yeah, you know, if I can build it and absorb it in a year or so, great, we can build it. That's fine. And then you can get to the answer. Ignore that chart, that's not important. Then the next chart is looking at how we do this for, of course, apartments. And I've updated this. And now, and, and Gayon saw this in the last uh, class, so I've updated this a little bit better for both of you. And this is for apartments. So we can get an equilibrium analysis for residential and a capture rate. And you've got to figure out who your target market is. Yes, Chad? Sir, for the office, it was a 12.8% vacancy downtown with a 21,000 square feet absorption per year. Okay, that's interesting. And by the way, has that 12% been around for how many years? Do you know? They, they don't have that. They have it in relation. Hold on, actually. What did he just say? I'm sorry. 12% seems to be it. And, you know, and by the way, I It's been around for a while. Right. And I uploaded also uh, uh, broker reports just a couple of nights ago. Uh, just look at those and see what the historic brokerage uh, vacancy rate has been for CBRE, Cushman, Wakefield, and the others. For, for, uh, for multi-family? No, for, for office. Oh, for Forget office. that. I just ahead of myself. The, the key is we're, we're a little uncertain. The office market has been weak historically, folks. And I know that they are, because we have a site that's zoned for office or commercial, you have to look into it. But it's not going to be weak forever. Maybe it will be. Maybe it will be. All right. So, so once you get that, so I think it's the low double digits. I'm pretty sure it is. All right, so the equilibrium analysis for apartments, you've got to go into your demographics now and get comfortable with who you think the target demographic is for downtown Fort Lauderdale. Just curious, what would be a good range for equilibrium analysis for, for years of supply and support? So is it, for example, capture, you said it's a under 10. All right, wait, no, we'll get there in a minute. So we're just, that's the capture rate. That'll be the next slide. So for equilibrium, once again, you want to figure out, this is the supply side, uh, excuse me, this is the demand side, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, this is the supply side, you want to see how many apartments there are downtown. Okay. So what's existing, what's under construction, what's proposed? Because there's a lot that's proposed, folks. Yeah. A couple thousand, five thousand, give or take, right? There's not that many under construction, our friends at Styles we know are building, almost complete with the, whatever the new thing is, used. And there's quite a healthy inventory. Yeah. So just make sure you figure that out. That's all. The Reese data should give you that. You'll be really on target for that. And each one, each one of your teams should figure that out. And so I will, once again, I'll email this to you in just a few minutes. You'll get that formula there. And the key now on the capture rate is, once again, looking at the households and making sure we get these households right. And so here, the issue is you've got to figure out who are the households. Now, I did an analysis, which is just a made-up example. Are they from 50,000, 35,000, 100,000? You've got to choose your demographic range. And the way you'll do it is you'll kind of back in. You'll say, oh, gee, what's my, what are the average rents? Look at those Reese tables. If the average rent is 1000 bucks a month, it means that a household earning X can afford it. I'm making that up. But figure it out, you know, how much can households usually pay, 35 to 40% of their income or not. So once you choose those households from X thousand dollars a year and up, then you can run through this number. 
And this analysis will tell you what the total renter household demand is. And then we get to Gayon's question, well, how many units can you capture? Remember, capture rates, you want to keep your capture rate at less than double digits. And the only reason why I put this here is so if you build, let's say, you know, here the example was total household renter demand was 3,300 units a year. And what it said was if you built 300 units, you could absorb them all in a year and it'd be less than 10%. That's good. What this basically says is if you build a project, you could absorb them all in a year and probably be fine in that marketplace. But let's say that the household demand was 1,000 and you still build 300 units. That meant basically you'd have to capture 30% of the market. That doesn't make sense. That would then tell you you probably want to build less, even if the zoning allowed you to do it. So then you have to make a decision. Do you build to the zoning? Do you recommend to Miller that that's the deal? And then that will flow through to what's the value of your site. So you've got some interesting dynamic here. I know they want you to demonstrate the value of the site is X, or greater than 5 million, but none of us know what the value of the site is to you complete your performance. Yes? Will you give us this? Yes. Oh, I, I'm going to email it to you. And you're going to have to put in your numbers. There's no, there's no trick here. It's just that you're going to have to do the research to get to it. No, so once again, this is on, the capture analysis is only for apartments. So you're doing two different analyses. The equilibrium for the office is basically just to demonstrate, make sure that you can actually put some office on this site. I mean, that the demand exists. Because if it, if it doesn't, you know, you can say, hey, you can build it, but it can't be put on this, you know, no one's going to absorb this for five years, ten years, maybe six months, months, and you'll say, great. It might push you and your team to say, no, the demand exists in my apartment analysis to build rental apartments. That's why you'll recommend this scheme. And it may be that one team says, I'm doing commercial, and the other team says, I'm doing this. By the way, this doesn't mean to exclude retail on the first floor or anything. That's different. And, and the analyses are, you know, that's just a, a, a lifestyle and a, a different kind of zoning or planning decision. So I will put these to you, okay? So these are just tools to help you get it right. And then I'll walk you through your SWAT, okay? So sir, sir, is, is demand and absorption, are those interchangeable or no? Um, Absorption, in effect, reflects the demand. Demand of past tense. Right. Absorption is a lagging indicator? So, no, so in this particular case, uh, it's not, a, it, a, absorption, in effect, is a current or, um, indicator of people in the market utilizing real estate, but it's not an indicator, an economic indicator, per se. So we don't have to worry about economic indicators in this particular exercise. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna now email to everybody in the class that's the spreadsheets, and you can go to count, and then I'll walk around and help you work through these issues. Okay, thank you for your patience in dealing with that. We'll have this in about three or four minutes. No, I'll come back to you. Okay, great. Alex. Alex. Did you do the office space for Broward in San Miguel's class? Retail. Retail? Who did office space? Brian. Oh, all right. I don't know. Some of not done his name. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, I can do it. No, it's not. 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 It's
That's a whole different thing. That's that's called the uh, the uh, yeah, yeah. yeah it's an advisory uh, group thing, but it's a consulting thing. Because I'm trying to understand. So basically, these folks volunteer their time to do a lot of it. So the, the, the people doing it don't actually have money. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it's not just like it's money, but I mean, you're like, well, it's, a fundraiser. Yeah. it's basically it's a fundraiser for you all out. So I guess the question is, when you raise the funds, so you know, it's not just a higher what do you mean? What? Who raises what brand? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so basically, the point is, just the just the just the the point is, the point is, the point is, the 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 that's all. That is a totally different thing because you're dealing with. Hence, why the guy was like a double right. 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 Government speech, the non government entity. The moment that we start engaging in current commercial enterprise, it's actually more for the profits of the country and doing their work to advance their profitability. And that's where it's really sketchy, really quick. I mean, that they, in most instances, once again, that's not what's going to happen. You know, you can't, you really can't do that because of the connection between. Right. I mean, you can have paid interns. That's, you know, a whole different thing. That, in other words, you can go get a job with no construction and be their intern and do this work. That has nothing to do with university. It's just you're a paid intern. But the moment that, that they start paying a fee into the university for us to then use students that it's only you can't say all this Yeah. It's very much it's very actually it is very similar. <laughs> Very yeah, and then if you see uh, from the recent oh, this zoning, this I guess so. Uh, uh, yeah, I think we're all going to have to do the pre K studies and then uh, give those to Patron and potentially do the schedule, present those like they're going to present. It's the actual So this is, yeah, you're going to have to do the last week class. Yeah, and then we're going to have to do the last week class. Yeah, and then we're going to have to do the last week class. Yeah, and then that's it for you. For this. Hey, 
Yeah. 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 So, um, I'm ready to help you with you, uh, your case study, and that way we can work through it, and while I'm working with them, then I can also then work with you, and that way you'll continue to learn, and hopefully you still find that these case studies are valuable and beneficial as well. I will email it, okay, okay, okay. And, and I'll email you then. So we are uh, actually one of the oh, yeah. oh, um, on Ripple Avenue, which will be a condo, so that's kind of cool stuff. Uh, another will be um, the Lowe's Hotel in Miami, because it's public private one. Like historically, it's good to be to understand that. And then the third will be uh, another New York City view for a city rapper that I want to take the concept of what they did to the next level. And I think that will be better. And then, uh, so what time are we leaving here? 10 40 okay. All right, I'll be back. All right, great, excellent. All right, let me email you your first one. This is eight minutes right here. You put eight minutes on the bottom. Yeah,
the grades you came out of the budget was the construction, because that would then directly feed into the development. You know, like if I had to develop a budget, then that would direct you to the That's why we're going to see how much each other is based. Brandon, you're really good. At it. I saw what you did with the project in the other class. Yeah. And I think you could easily see the cell phone. Yeah, I don't I don't yeah, I didn't get what was the risk. Well, we're saying so. So no, we're already getting to that. One of the things that we got to do is try to make sure. Yeah, can you send it to me? So this is like the market analysis and the meeting just like the past this design can't be the best plan. It's like the whole region. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the so what's the market for strip retail? So what's the market for strip retail? What's the market for condo? But so that means that what's the for every for? It's just like it's professional, professional but not office. So but then the actual that's what you can't you can't a little tiny one dollar. Where it's not like a like an apartment where you have to be I would say that in downtown Fort Worth, there are much more professional jobs. It would probably like a small employer. There's always a really high for that. So, how do you think that they would say for professional? Yeah, so now, where are you going to find that? Well, I mean, it would be it would be class to, to make do to to fill up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 No, no. I mean, he kind of went over that, but it wasn't that. We're just at the central. Yeah, but we're we're way out. Yeah, yeah. Just stop. So this is Okay. So and then you make a parking garage or like. I will say the size of our garage is probably important. The numbers are easy to figure out. The construction is easy to figure out. But it's the market that drives the design. Design drives everything else. So whoever's coming up with the design of it, is, I mean, like, if this becomes the design, really it's really only going to have all this stuff really nice. So this is what I'm going to do. So this is what I'm going to do. Nothing to do with. You mean that it's not the right size? It has to fit within those parameters. 
that's probably the most. Right, that's 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 probably the most. But it, it drives everything else. Like the You need to find out what's what's possible. That's only the market is what's possible. But like you can't design something that's not feasible, right? But once you once you figure out what you want, as long as you're designing it, it's a good design.